Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Amsonet Prime, and today I am joined by the famous Miles Greb. How are you doing? Uh, thanks for not saying infamous, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's good to be here, man. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, so before we get started, I, I did want to kind of plug your Kickstarter. You have a Kickstarter, right? Uh, Puck yeah, of the Artist. yes, I do. Yeah, thank uh, you. That's nice of you. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so Puck the Artist is one of my new comic series, and it's um, it's set in a world where everything that exists is drawn into existence. So like, if you want to make a birthday cake, you draw up your own birthday cake, or um, for example, they're kind of after school things. They've been drawing a tree together. Um, not everybody has this power. It's not exactly like the Force in Star Wars, where only some people can master it. But it's something where not everybody's great at. It's a skill. Um, okay. And and then so not like world, a, not like a Harry Potter where like you have the Muggles and the non Muggles. Yeah, everybody can draw, but it's like computer programming. It's something you have to practice at. Right. Um, okay. Some people are better than others at it. But in this world where you can draw things into existence, color has been lost. And um, when the plot begins, they find that that happened, and then when they discover it, everybody thinks. Puck, our titular hero, um, is kind of like the chosen kid, so everybody puts all these kind of expectations on him, but he's really not. It's just kind of a happenstance. So it's about their responsibility to try to turn color to the world while they deal with these um, kind of pressures on them to fulfill this role that people think. Um, and it's, it's a 64-page intro into the story, and uh, we're, we're almost funded. We're $200 away right now. So. I saw that. Yeah, that's, that, sounds, yeah. that sounds super interesting. Thank you. Um, yeah, it, it sort of reminds me... Of a, of a few different crossovers almost like uh have you have you seen ruby sparks i haven't actually uh, ruby sparks is um a fantastic movie where he uh, is a really famous artist or a really famous book writer and he got really famous after writing one book um mm -hmm. and he has like this uh writer's block and so everyone expects the next great book out of him and he yeah. can't come up with anything but he has this dream about this girl so he writes about her and he writes her into existence oh cool That's yeah very cool. and then he yeah. starts writing things and of course with that power comes, he starts screwing her up by writing, oh, you know, she can sure. speak French and she has this background yeah. and things change. Anyway, it's really interesting. That is cool. Yeah. Anyway, so I did want to start kind of uh, a little bit about getting to know you. Um, sure. So what is what is your favorite Final Fantasy video game? Tactics, for sure. I, I'm a huge tactics fanboy. I mean, um, six is my favorite of like the, the numeral games, the, the main series. Mm -hmm. But um I, I didn't know Tactics was coming out as a kid, you know, because back then, like, we had the internet, but it wasn't, like, every day you're on it all the time, you know, and I just went into an EB Games one day, and it was just, like, in the bin, I was like, oh, Final Fantasy game I've never heard of, and it was the first Tactics game I ever played, I really fell in love with it, and I still play it every year on the, the PS Vita, I play the War of the Lions version, it's, um, I don't know, just, like, you know, I, I, I'm an atheist, so I kind of like to take down the church part of the game, you know? And, like, I like all the ethical combats they go through, and Yoshida's art and the music. It's just such a beautiful game. I, I love it so much. Cool, yeah, I actually haven't uh, gotten around to playing that one. But I have a similar story with how I got into Star Ocean, where I just walked into the EB Games at the time, and there was a Star Ocean game. I was like, let me try this, and it was one of the best yeah. games I've ever played. Awesome, um, man. What about character? What is your favorite character? Ramza. <laughs> uh, yeah, I also really like Terra and Locke, though. Um, okay. I mean, I, I so for I, those I play... two games specifically, it's really yeah. That's really I mean, so much. yeah, Tactics and Six are my two favorite. I mean, I love Seven, I love Nine, I love Ten. I, I just love Final Fantasy, but uh, Tactics and Six are like the nearest to my heart. So okay, yeah. So Tactics and Twelve are the two that I have never played. Okay, uh, the... the rest I quite enjoy. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about uh, what brought you to Final Fantasy, the TCG. What sure, brought you to um, the TCG? Yeah, so I tried to play chapters back in the day. I bought um, the little white boxes that have White Warrior on them with the Amino art and everything. And uh, I tried to play with my friends. We printed out like a translation on the PDF on paper, but sure. it wasn't like very fun because every time we needed a card, we had to look through the paper and it was kind of rough. So we kind of gave up. And then when I heard it, it was coming to America, we were very excited. So, um, you know, I got some of the Wave 1, Opus 1 boxes. I pre-ordered them from some of the shops here in Seattle. And it was really rough getting boxes, but uh, I tried, you know, I had to buy some scalp packs and eBay and stuff. And it was like $25 to get starter boxes on eBay because there just wasn't a lot of supply. But um, yeah, we were we were playing since Opus 1, and um, I was looking forward to it. And uh, it was hard getting into it because of supply, but uh, I'm really sure. happy we did. So. so how many people did you have that you were trying to play chapters with before opus how many people were playing chapters um my good buddy andrew and mitchell um okay, so... and i would, would try to play just us three okay so. and then what about when opus the opus uh let's say one came out how many people would did you have at your local uh scene or beginning um, there, of the scene? there was uh, about eight of us originally 
Okay, so that's, uh, that's a good start, though. Yeah, we were lucky. This uh, guy in Bitly, who was, was wonderful in the community in the beginning, but unfortunately he's not playing anymore because of his work schedule, he actually was able to get a case to himself. So he had a lot of um, commons and rares that he could give to some new people, including us, especially because the supply was a problem in the beginning. Sure. So he helped um, foster the game up in Seattle a lot in the beginning, and uh, we really appreciated that. So we had six in the beginning, and um, things really started taking off once Opus 3 came out. Um, yeah. I started going to uh, Geeky Villain, which is our shop up here in Everett, and that scene's really been growing a lot. And we've been able to uh, get a good amount of players there. And then I, I created the um, Final Fantasy TCG Seattle Facebook group, and that's really helped us kind of um, get players communicating when they're going to be at each tournament each week. And I think it's really helped Seattle grow. Yeah, uh, we have something in Tampa that's very similar. I created pages FFTCG Tampa. Yeah, uh, we post um, all the time on there. Really, we're we're posting like uh for example we had someone show up last week and they didn't have a title deck we're like what are you doing sure. man like we all post yeah. every title deck don't yeah. you check the page and they're like oh crap i didn't read but for the most part you know if we if we post hey we're gonna play title today everyone brings a title deck yeah um it is pretty cool to be able to have that community we started uh with a similar amount of people um without myself i wasn't playing i didn't start playing until right at the beginning of opus 3 and so okay, car, cool. card issues weren't a problem for me because uh when i decided i wanted to play i found out well, Opus 2 was out, and Opus 3 was about to come out, so I started, I was playing a lot of Magic. I was still trying yeah. to play Magic competitively, but every time I'd win at our local shop, I would just use that money to buy Final Fantasy packs. Sure. And my wife uh, wasn't here yet, she was still in Idaho, so I was collecting all the packs, and I wasn't opening them. I, the whole idea mm -hmm. is, like, when she gets here, we'll open all these packs, and we'll learn to play. Um, and then Opus 3 came out, and I still hadn't played, but I had all these packs, Yeah. Uh, and then I started buying Opus 3, um, and then we opened them up. I actually top aided a tournament with a starter deck and a Fasoya that oh, I added. Um, there you go, man. And, yeah, and then I was like, you know, I really like this game, so I, I got online and bought a, a play set of Opus One and Two. Um, and so at that time, people, would, you know, some people were starting to move out of the game. Uh, it was one of the real like flex of income and outcome. Sure. Um, yeah. And so it was really easy for me to pick up play sets of the game to get involved. Uh, so what about what about FFTCG right now? are some of the strong points for you? What what about the game specifically are your strongest sure. points? Sure. So, obviously, I'm a big Final Fantasy fanboy, so that's a thing for me. But um, as I, I've been playing card games since 1996. You know, Star Wars CCG, Magic. I played the old Lord of the Rings card game, Versus, etc. So I play a lot of card games. And what I've noticed about Final Fantasy is that the meta is actually super diverse. And I don't think there are any decks that like are, are domineering to the format or unhealthy. And so I think it's a really fun game if you are good at brewing or like to play kind of rogue decks because there's so much room in there to design and play your decks, especially because of the um, the liquidness of your resources. Because you you know obviously you can discard cards with CP. Right. It's not like a static resource build like Magic. And so I think that that makes the game really creative for designers and players. And it's just being able, like, if you look at any top eight, you normally see at least five decks that are distinctly different. And, like, I think of the top 16 at Nationals, there's, like, at least 14 decks that were distinctly different. I mean, you have kind of, you know, mainstay cards that will be in any deck running ice or running water, but you still have, you know, five or six cards that are different. And I, I think that that is a lion's share of why I think the game's so good. And um, that's what keeps me continuing to play, other than being a Final Fantasy fanboy, so... Yeah, that is that's interesting. Um, I do notice that you haven't been very vocal about uh, the mono ice discussion. Um, so when you say that's very healthy, you know, I'm not saying that you're right or wrong, but there are a ton of people who are very vocal that you know mono ice is not fun to play against. Um, I sit in the camp of that it is not fun to play against, and you can beat it. Um, sure, but it's 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 frustrating to. I don't mind playing against it. Um, you know, I've played in the bottomless pit days of Magic. Um, you know, I've played against Necker opponents in the survival decks. You know, I played against Flash and Vintage in um, mm -hmm. Star Wars CCG. I don't know if anyone gets this reference, but, you know, I played against the operative decks that were way more oppressive. The, the mono discard deck, you know, it kind of does its thing. And then, like, they either run out of steam or they don't. And you, like, you know the cards that you're going to draw that are good against them. And so I think it's just about being careful. You know, you have really good things like Shadow Lord that can help, or I was playing um, Lightning Wind, um, you know, like my Cypher card's pretty effective against them. Um, sure. So, I, or Zidane, they can't kill in a lot of ways, or if you're playing Blue, Garnet can't be Mateus, which really helps with blocking. Um, I think there's, I think that deck is not unhealthy for the environment. Um, it's not dominant. It's never been over 20% of any, like, 
field success wise and it's pretty easy to play so i think that there's kind of a selection bias there where um any good or novice player can do well with the deck because of its ease of play and so it's going to be overrepresented on lists okay so i don't really think that it's like a domineering deck i don't think it's a problem i, I understand that some people don't have fun playing it and i think that can be a concern but I think it's healthy for there to be kind of a, a bugaboo deck anyway, a deck that people don't like to see. Because sure. I think that it, that in itself inspires its own kind of deck building and, and community. Like, you know, we got to take this deck down together. Um, yeah. But I think that there is a good amount of options to it, and I find the meta to be very healthy myself. Okay, that, that's all uh, fair points. Um, so l let's move into some examples. Um, you've been vocal about the job system. Yeah. So... <laughs> That's no doubt. So it's I'm kind gonna, of a I'm, meme. I'm going to get the joke out of the way because everyone's going to ask. Miles, what is your job? Uh, well, my favorite job is Dragoon, which people are probably going to say lol Dragoon to me. No, no, no. But, uh, what, is, what is your job in um, the real world? Probably Final Fantasy, I guess. Bard? Is just... No, 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 no. Like, for example, you. I'm a writer. You're a writer. There you go. Yeah. All right. So okay. you are defined by the writer class. Okay. All right. <laughs> I ahead. suppose. Uh, what 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 specifically bothers you about the job types that Square Enix is doing right now? Um. So, one of the things is, of course, you know, Final Fantasy is is a series designed by tropes, right? And um, I mean, because the games aren't connected through plot or characters, they have a series of tropes. You know, like the, the Light Warriors, the drop systems, um, Tokobos normally taking down a hierarchy. You know, bonds of friendship or like this blending of futurism and fantasy. Those are kind of like all the Final Fantasy tropes. And so the drop system, of course, is one of those. And this game implements a drop system, but it only pseudo uses that trope. Um, you know, we have from Final Fantasy 1, perfected more in Final Fantasy 5. We can see it in um, Tactics or 11, more pronounced. You know, the, the monk, black mage, white mage, red mage, warrior, etc. drop system. And, um, it's in the game, but it's not so, implemented. In... So, just under, so just understand you, mm -hmm. right? Like, so Cloud, if we're talking about Seven, would be like Warrior. Yeah, Tifa he'd be would a be, warrior. Tifa would be Monk. Yes. Aerith would be White Mage. Is yes. that sort of what we're talking about? So, like, he... Bear, like, what would Barrett be? I don't even. So, so, so in some universes, um, things are not a hundred percent pronounced. Sure. Um, but Barrett's like a ranger. He has ranger okay. type abilities. Okay. He has charge and shoot kind of stuff, right? Okay. Um, or like Nanaki. Red 13 is like a blue mage. You know, you get him, he starts with enemy skill. That's like the thing he gets. Um, so, so some games, the jobs are not like as pronounced as others, but like in nine, I think it would be hard to argue that Zidane's not a thief. You know, Garnett starts as a white mage. She's wearing the white and red tunic for crying out loud. And then she turns into a summoner in the story later. But mm -hmm. in, in the game, just as a game mechanics thing, because I think some people think I'm just being pedantic about the Final Fantasy tropes. I think that there's a loss of interactivity with the job system, and I think there's a loss of intuitiveness with the job system. Um, to, to the second point, intuitiveness, um, you know, we try to play a lot of limited events to encourage new players to show up, yeah. and um, a lot of times, you know, they'll have played that card, the Crystal Chronicles card that lets you search for a warrior, right? And they'll go grab the five drop warrior, but he's not a warrior, he's a standard unit, because they went with that standard unit path of calling a lot of generic character standard units, or there's like, um, they have to, on cards like Matt, um, write Monk or Job Type Monk. And so I think that that's like a, clutter, a cluttered way to text the cards that you have to reference two things. I think that it would have been more beneficial if the cards had two Job Types, like Magic eventually figured out, because I don't think that this is um, like a negative aspect to Final Fantasy's design overall, because Magic, it took them like nine or ten years to learn this. But once, like, Onslaught came out, they learned that cards should probably have a more unified system of typing. Um, so, so, for example, when Onslaught, like, where Beast came out, right? Like yeah, so, started like... becoming Beast and... Yeah, so we had all these years where some things would only have, like, it would say Summon Elf, right? Right. Or, like, some cards would have to say Count as an Angel back in the day. But eventually they're like, well, what we should do is everything should have, like, a type. Like, it's an elf or it's a merfolk or it's a dragon. And then for a lot of things, it should also have, like, a class type. So you got, you're getting elf warrior or merfolk wizard, etc., or rogue. That way, when you have cards that mention warrior, rogue, wizard, um, they're interactive between sets. So if you have a card, like, in, in Lorwyn, for example, that's like, you know, counter target spell, if you had control a wizard, draw a card, mm -hmm. you know, that will work with cards you're going to print in five or six years. So it makes your cards more interactive. So it's better for the game because more interaction means you can have more legacy formats. Um, limited environments are going to be better. 
and the cards are just do more. So when you're buying cards, you're, you're buying cards to just do more stuff. Um, and I think that that's a that's a positive feature for the game. And um, things like if you make cards that are monk matter cards, like Matt, for example, and you limit the amount of monks, you're telling people they can't really be very creative in the deck building. And I think for a lot of newer players, tribal stuff is an easy way to figure out how to build a deck. Like, oh, I'll build a monk deck. And if they go to Mognet and they, you know, put in monk, they're going to see a lot of characters. People use Mognet still? I like the search engine there. I know <laughs> they don't do the block, but um, who, they're still updating cards to the search engine, and I like it. But um, <laughs> okay. FFDex, sure. FFDex is a great site. Um, the designer lives up here, and he's a great guy. But uh, I, I like the search engine of Mognet. But they can go to the site of their choosing. Right. And if you, if you look, you know, you'll there's not that many cards that interact with that. Now, um, I've heard people say, like, well, they don't want Tifa to interact with that because they think it will be broken. But I think that's, like, kind of a non-falsifiable argument because you're just claiming something's broken, but there's no you don't have to in any way demonstrate that it'd be broken. Well, sure, because Sabin is probably better than Tifa anyway, and he is a monk. Yeah, right? And I mean, like, if Genesis was a monk, would that make Matt a problem card? Like, I don't think so. Like, no. people aren't going it'd, it'd to... Make, it'd make Matt much better, though. <laughs> yeah, they would. But, and yeah. and I, I just think that it would it'd be better for the future of the game too, because if you want to do a set like let's say you want to do a Final Fantasy eleven set, right? Mm -hmm. Or like a five set. So the drop type's gonna matter a lot. You're gonna have a lot of cards that are gonna mention, you know, blue mage, red mage, monk. And if those cards interact with past cards more, that just adds more value to the game. That's just more equity of interaction. And I think what we have now is a problem where we don't have that. Or even let's get away from just the tropes. Um you have things like seed and then seed candidates, right? So, like, there's a limited interaction there. Or you have a lot of avalanche operatives, but, like, there's no cloud avalanche operative. There's no Tifa avalanche operative. So if you're a new player playing the game and you want and Seven's your favorite game, which is the most likely person getting into the game is their most likely favorite Final Fantasy Seven, and they're probably going to want to play a Seven deck. Sure. There's not a lot of interaction between those cards. You pretty much have to play Barrett Fair, and, yeah. like, Biggs and Wedge and Jesse. Those are Avalanche operatives, and right. that package isn't very full, so I guess we don't play those cards. So you don't play, like, Barrett, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse in your 7 deck, maybe. Right. And I, and it could have been otherwise. So, like, you're not, if, so you're not specifically, and we're not just talking about monks, for example. You'd be yeah. fine if Tifa's job wasn't monk, but she had a more universal job. Um, yeah. I, okay, I, I could see I, that. You know, if for example, because you know, I couldn't see Cloud being an operative. I could see him being a mercenary, um, but I could see Tifa being an operative, for example. So, yeah. so you would have been fine if Tifa was an operative, sort so of like my, there it is. If I was like, I would like them to have a split system so that they have a trope and they have a specific one. So, so like could, slash operative. Yeah, and and they have the unified abbreviations that they use for eleven, the three digit, you know, M. NK or DRK for Dark Knight. So, like, it'd be easy to abbreviate. It wouldn't take up space. And if space is a concern, Americ, his name is, like, the 7th General, the 6th, 9th on a Tuesday. It's long as shit. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's not a problem. So, like, if she was an avalanche operative slash monk, or if she was, I don't know, bartender slash monk, you know, like, just, just um, if they had a, a relevant thing that matters for their title series sure. stuff, and then that, I think it would make the cards more... And like I said, interactive. I think it'd just be more fun. So moving um, moving into the future, mm -hmm. would you like to see Square Enix implement this, or would you like to see them retroactively implement it? So would so, Tifa become a monk, um, and would that be confusing for new players, or would you simply say, like, well, when they eventually, and hopefully they reprint Opus 1, you know, that they yeah. just add Tifa monk? So, um, so, sorry to bring up magic again, but the magic had this problem with when Onslaught came out. They had to basically errata, you know, decades of cards which was a problem sure. which is one of the reasons i bring this up now because the longer we wait the harder it is to errata um i think the best thing to do would just be to fix it going forward and not have to errata the previous cards um my, my like i would like them to errata the previous cards especially the reprint but i'd understand if they didn't want to because this game's trying to be more simplistic in some ways sure. but um i would like to see at least if they're not going to do the split system, at least not have job types on cards that will never be interactive. Such like as Larsa girl. Yeah, or I, yeah, which I I do find minimally sexist. I don't. I'm not like Raven Tumblr screaming about it, but I think it's a little cringy. Um, so or like I would I'm say, sorry. yeah. And just on that topic, um, I would I would disagree that it's sexist. Mm -hmm. um, 
based off of the region at which it came out of. I mean, not not to say that the Japanese aren't misogynistic because they are a very misogynistic culture. A lot of I people just, tend to be <laughs> right. That's that's yeah. fair, but they are even more so. At least my limited experience in Japan and, sure. and my understanding from my Japanese friends that they can tend to be that way. I'm not saying all, you know. But I understand. The, the the point is, is that I think that it it's it's not an error in translation. It's mm-hmm. simply, hey, what was she in the game? She was a girl. Um, that's what masked woman was. She was a girl. Uh, but Aerith, Aerith is a girl. Like, why does she get a job type? Well, Aerith <laughs> was more than a girl, though, right? Yeah, but that's my point. But they're all more than girls. Like, I feel like it's just a, taking their agency away from them. Especially that some of them, like, true. have in-game job types. Like, the Eleven character is a geomancer. Like, you can summon her as a trust in Eleven. You can go to her Wicca page. Like, okay. I, yeah, see, I, I, know, I, I just, haven't played that much Eleven. Eleven is the that, online. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or... So, but, like, Larsa, for example, like, he's, like, the second-born son of the Emperor. Just make him a prince. You have sure. cards that say Prince Matters. Like, essentially, he has no job type. Like that Because there are no is, other second son. It, it's yeah. extremely unlikely that that job type will ever be referenced in any other card. So, he essentially is missing a line of interactivity text on his card. I just think that makes the game worse, especially when we play Mix Limited, which is positive for card shops, because card shops want to sell their old stock, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, we're, like, drafting stuff, and, like, you have a card that mentions a prince or mentions a warrior or mentions a knight, and you have things that probably could be that, but they're just not. And so, like, you, your limited environments are worse. You know, I don't think there's a lot of reason for that. It's it's a pretty easy fix. I would just limit the amount of total drop types would be kind of a happy medium between what I want and what they're doing, and I think that would be better. But okay. um, when I argue this on Facebook, I think people think I'm mad. I'm not, I'm not mad, you know? Like, I... I I have kind of a declarative way of speaking, I guess, which doesn't always come across great on Facebook. Or so let's let's so talk I, about that. What yeah, yeah. what do you see the community's perception mm-hmm. of you being right now? And what, um, but before sure. we answer that, also <clears throat> as an aside to that, how important is it for you to is that perception of you and your ability to affect change? And then finally, like how much of that is important to you? Like how, like, so sure. one is what's your percent, what do you think people's perception of you is? How important um, is it for you to be able to affect change through your interaction? And then finally, like, what about that going back to your, the people's perception of you? Mm-hmm. How does that affect your ability to make change? Um, sure. So, I mean, so like uh, up there in Seattle, you know, we all, we all get along really well. Like I said, I run the Facebook group. So, um, I, and I, I think people like me up here, you know, like I run, a, I help organize a lot of the events. I've I helped a lot of people into the game up here. And, um, you know, we have, we have discussions in our Facebook group about spoilers or rules stuff and everybody seems to get along really well. But uh, in the FFTCG fan group, um, I think some people don't like me. Uh, some of that is, I, like I said, I have a very declarative way of speaking. And I think when like you hear my voice, I can kind of like put in the inflection that I'm not trying to be like, extremely hard or rude about it but um just in text i think it comes off a little sharper sure. I, you know i'm not trying to like um demean anybody or putting down put, put anybody down it's just kind of the way I, I i talk um i i feel bad like when a lot of people kind of jump on me because like I, i'm talking about something like the job system like i just i'm not trying to put the game down i like the game you know i buy a case of every set like um I, I play twice a week. I love the game. I just there's little things that I don't like um, that I'd like to see improved, and I don't see a lot of communication a lot of times about sure. them from from the people in charge. And, and that I can, feel that like... can be an issue, right? Yeah, you know, and I'll I'll Sorry. just say that you know on on everything that I don't think that there's much that you and I actually disagree on. Mm-hmm. I think very similar. The only thing that so far I've said that we really disagree on is ice because i really just don't think it's healthy i I, I understand but um i'm also not opposed i don't want it banned i don't i just wish it it didn't happen Um, i wish i wish fire was a bit better against it i think that would be a really good like it would make a lot of sense right if you made a couple good fire cards that were especially good against ice it would help fire out a lot hurt ice i think it'd be more healthy so how is so so you have this um you have a trope right uh, yeah. <laughs> on the fans page. Sure. How does that affect your ability to make the change in which you want to see? Um, well, you know, I I wish I didn't come off that way either by my own fault or by 
I think some of it might be a lot of the people in that group are European, and so Americans might just be more abrasive, or maybe I'm just an asshole. That might, you know, uh, be true. Um, I, I don't know. I think I inadvertently I I've become like the gadfly of the group. You know, like I don't, I didn't really mean to. I just, um, I don't know. I like, I don't want to be seen as as the jerk of the group. Uh, I think people, some people see me as that. I just like some things. I just wish would get changed, and they don't. Like timing of final matches. Like, oh, I mean, I'm I'm right there with you. I absolutely hate it. But let me let me point out. I'm sorry. Few, let me point out a few examples. Um, oh, you don't you don't have to apologize. Interrupt me. I'll interrupt you. It's it's just no, what it's, we it's cool, man. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I hate the timing system. I mm-hmm. hate it. I tend to play very controlling decks. I come from a very control magic background. I, yeah, I very seldom play uh, aggro decks. The closest to an aggro deck would be like Jund with like um, Putrid Leeches would be as close as it yeah. gets. You know, like it's and Jund can get pretty grindy because you got Birdmate Dragons. Sure, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I agree with that, but I think that there is a better approach that you could have. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a hard approach to do because I'll give you an example. Uh, for the longest time I was a, not like, I'm not a fan of, for example, uh, if you have, I think 14 players is the magic number where mm-hmm. you can have 14 players. Someone can go X one and still not make top four, which sure. is a travesty. Um, that happened to Zach. It happened to Adam Lane. I don't yeah. think that it's right. Um, and so when, when card shops would hold a top eight for anything less than 24 people, I'd be like, well, hey, well, that's not the Square Enix rules. They should change that. You should go by the Square Enix rules. And, and I'll admit that I'm starting to get away from that. I'm starting to be like, well, you know what? If you're going to break the rules, break the rules. Because I think going X1 and not m- getting a chance is not a fair way to, you know, sure. conclude a, a top cut. And if you go by the magic system, uh, the way that the, the Wizards runs its events, I don't think that there's any situation where you can be X1 and miss the top cut. Uh, yeah, which is a really great well, well, way. Part of that is because this game has a data problem. Like just in terms of numbers, when you play best of one, you get less data. Sure. Um, because you don't have two ones and two O's. Sure. You just have one O's. So there's less differentiation between players that way, which I think is a problem. Well, yeah. I mean, and so I used to not like that it was best of one. Um, it's grown on me though, actually. Like where I'm fine with it being best of one as long as top cuts best of three for sure. Like sure. I think the game would be unplayable at best of one top cut. Um, whereas I think if you lose a if you lose a game in during Swiss, like well, that's no different than best of two because here you play your next game and win. Yeah. Um, but that being said, you know the way that I plan on affecting that change is uh, I do plan on writing uh, Kage uh, Yama and just kind of explain my thoughts, whether he listens or not, is on him. Sure. I will then write the, the European page, and even though I talk to RB quite often, I know he's the one who runs the North American page. I'm also going to write them. Furthermore, I've already told my team that I won't play in any Crystal Cups with a less than 90 minute top cut. I don't like 90 minutes, but 90 minutes is more than fair, at least as a compromise. Um, And, you know, that's just one way I think that you could affect things is basically saying, hey, listen, I'll show up, I'll judge. Um, I'd rather play, but I'm not going to play in an event where I'm punished for playing Fasoya. Or I'm punished for playing these cards which they gave us to play with. You know, if I want to play Gigas and Gao and set up these long, these yeah, long grindy I, battles. Yeah, is a good example. I think it's um, I think it's ridiculous that damage counts against you. I mean, it's a resource, and players should be allowed to use their Ingram resources as they see fit until they are dead. Like, I, and I agree 100 yeah. percent with that. Um, well, to uh, to me, I just feel like these are kind of like adolescent growing pains that like card games have dealt with, and I feel like they have figured out those answers a long time ago. And and it frustrates me that Final Fantasy in the year, you know, 2018 still has problems that other games solved a long time ago. I think they know the answers, sure, so they just won't implement them. It's not, it's, when you say adolescence, it's not literally like a child because the child is going to make the same mistakes as the parent no matter what. We're mm-hmm. talking, we're talking, you know, like science driven where we're standing on the, the shoulders of giants. So that, we know correct. in magic that the top, we, we, like a, a final is going to time is unacceptable. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's so like like if, if Final Fantasy was a you know if this was new, there wasn't all these other card games. Just twenty year history, I, it wouldn't be as annoying to me. But like they they can see that those things have been dealt with, the problems have happened, and they've solved them and other things. And they don't implement them, and I also feel like there is a um, there's a pushback against the community for any amount of criticism. I think a lot of people see criticism as negative towards the game and not a constructive part of the game. But I it, think. To, 
some people are just one, one sec. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think to some people, maybe because like for a while there, people weren't sure if the game was growing and stuff and they were worried about it. There's kind of this like sensitivity where they just don't want any criticism because they're afraid it might hurt the game. But I think it's an, it's important that there is criticism so that the game can be perfected and grow. I'm so sorry. Is there a way that we could uh, affect that change in a more positive way? Um, I'll give you an example. So one of the mm -hmm. things that you that I think that you fail in, um, though you have the best, uh, like you're, you're you're trying your best. You have, um, but so at, during the nationals cost, for example, uh, you mentioned that you shared the link to the fans page, right, in the group mm -hmm. in the Reddit page. So you're doing your best to spread the game, as many people are. But then you say, but then they, they check this and they and they see, like, for example, because there was an extended round of breaks, right? In fact, it was a, look, being at Nationals, I'm glad that they took those super long breaks, but only for the reasons they took them and which sure. they wanted to make sure that they weren't screwed up. As a, yeah, as a, so uh, at, at Nationals, they like, were, they, they, it's supposed to be Nationals. They were using the wrong system. Yes. They were using the best so three system at the beginning of the game. Like, how can that happen? So that's what I'm saying. Uh, well, I don't know if that's the system they're using. They were, they were not using the Square Enix system. Yeah. Which is my, I, I, two of my good buddies were there. So I, right. I so, yeah. uh, right. It, but even then, rumors were different around <clears throat> what was going yeah, on. Okay. Fair enough. There. Um, so we don't know the exact route or, I will just say this. At least most players don't know the exact route of mm -hmm. what was going on. Uh, players that do are very happy that they took the time to fix the issue. But from, sure. a, from a player perspective, from a spectator perspective, it's un... It's it's not okay to have the setup that we had because, for example, all it would take to fix a solution, right, is to point the camera at the trivia going on and the crowd could participate. Yeah, the definitely. Spectators. And, I, and I agree with that. But I guess my issue is 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 if you pointed all those people to the stream, right? But then they get on the stream and they see... So whether you like it or not, you're a voice um, that people follow. Even if you think that people don't like you, that's not necessarily true for the YouTubers who seem to follow your lead when you say something negative and it starts going. So when they join the, when they join the stream, they see you being negative and then other people also being negative. And I think that that is a cause... For concern, if that makes sense, and I think you have no, the best I, intentions. I, I, I see what you're saying, and I think that that's a good argument. Um, what, what I would say is, I mean, we've had this system now where there is a loading screen with the Final Fantasy song playing and a static image for over a year. Yeah. Right, and so like I, I, I every time there's a major event, I try to share it on Reddit and a lot of Final Fantasy forums because I want people to get into the game, and they click it, and at least fifty percent of the time, maybe it's forty. Like it's on that loading screen. Yeah, I I, and, I wouldn't know the math, but I I would even yeah. guess that it's higher than that. I would and guess it, that it might. Here's be the thing: 60%. it needs to stop. Like um, you know, people have mentioned it before. I ever mentioned it. You know, like I mentioned it nicely last year, and it hasn't stopped. And it needs to stop. And I don't know how to make it stop. Like uh, it's not that the guys who do the play by play do a bad job. They're just not on camera all the time. And so, I like mean, the break zone, for example. Yeah, yeah, I'm not criticizing them. Like they do fine when they're doing the play by play, you know? I those guys seem like great guys. So but, but those guys are mm -hmm. those guys are the people behind the break zone. Sure. You know, Johnny Tran, all, all of them, they are the people responsible behind the stream. So I'm only asking why criticize yes, yeah, so Square Enix hired them, but why not sure. criticize them? So what why not Well so if, if in fact um they are the ones who make it so there is that that giant pause, and that they won't fix it. Then it, the criticism lies on them. That then it is their fault. I, I don't know, you know, what the deal is, or who they talk to, or the producer decides. So I'm not going to say sure. that. Sure. But I mean, that that downtime needs to stop. If you watch, you know, like um, Magic World streamer, even Star Wars CCG, which is you know kind of a dead game. If you watch the stream for its worlds, when there's downtime, they don't just cut to a screen. People are talking. They they show cards up there. That's a great time to do spoilers. Like at Worlds, we had. Richard came on and showed the deck box and stuff. That yeah. was cool. People were excited to see it, you know? Uh, there's some, like, do a deck check, you know? Like, you had an awesome deck, right? I, I think you had the most interesting deck in the entire event. And um, it, while if you, like, win or lost a game quickly and it's the next round, hey, everybody, let's have an interview with Samson. You know, like... Right, um, and I think that people are concerned that um, 
about spoiling tech, you know, and no one knew my deck, but the truth is, sure. is that no one's going to watch that stream live. They're also playing. Yeah. So they really, do it in Worlds and Magic, which a lot more money is on the line, and it's not right. a problem. No, I could, I could agree with that. Um, I just... So everything you're saying, I, I, I agree with. I just... I, I'm worried that we, we're not affecting the change that we so, want to see because, I, I because think the goal you're right is we, we both love the game and we want to yeah. see it grow. We just need to figure out the best way to make that happen. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I think I, I wish I could be a bit more um, eloquent in my criticism. I think some of it is because you know I'm I'm doing a lot of other stuff. So like I'm normally also working on my comic. That's fair. Or, you're, so you're, you're, you're multitasking. And so, you know, I'll see a thing. I'll be like, God damn it, fix that. And that's just like I tap that real quick on Facebook and then I'll, go back to doing what I'm doing, you know? I'll give so you, it's like. I'll give an example of this. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have timestamps so we can actually talk about this. Around four hours and 49 minutes in the stream, you talk about how uh, sleeves, um, that you can't believe that full art sleeves are still appropriate. Um, I love full art sleeves, but I tend to agree. I don't think that they yeah. are appropriate for competitive play. However, you don't provide a reason. Um, and, and probably because you're busy doing other things. And, and if my guess is the reason, the same reason as mine, is those sleeves could be easily marked without, because there's so Extremely much easy. attention to detail that if you don't know what you're looking for, uh, you're not going to see a difference in the sleeves. Even as a spectator on camera, it'd be very hard to spot uh, yep. with that type of thing, the, the type of detail. So I agree. And, and, and if you saw me, I, I just had black sleeves with the yep. regular gold because I, I don't like character sleeves for big events like that any longer. I mean, you know, if, if you're playing them for fun at your local event, oh, no I do. problem. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah I, I use them. Don't, I'm not dissing anybody, but it's weird at nationals they would allow them. I think that right. that's odd. So I think that there's a, an importance, there's a level of responsibility from someone like yourself who's vocal and people listen to, whether it's good or bad, you have an audience um, and you have a platform. So there's some sort of... Yes, I know that I'm working on my project, but if I'm going to say something about the sleeves, I need to explain why. Because you, so you that, bring up a legitimate concern that people should be worried about. Yeah. I, character sleeves should not be on. Uh, you know, they're they're more worried. So if you like, you can't play on an unofficial play mat. I think that's much less concern to me. Yeah, because you can't mark an unofficial play mat. But it doesn't affect the game. You know, that's a role. Right. Like I, I, I'm just worried about like the game's integrity. Okay, that's you know, no, I, I I agree with that. And, yeah, and that's why you know um, I don't like the time system, just like you don't. Yeah. Um, you know, but you got to be careful with the way you word things. So uh, you know, you had also said he didn't really win the Seattle Crystal Cup. He played on, on he slow played on purpose, and that went to time. Uh, I will be one hundred percent honest with you and say I haven't watched that uh, the finals. I was busy during the time, and I went back, didn't go back and see it. Uh, but that does seem like an, a, a pretty big assumption, so, right? No, no, it is. So, I, um, first of all, I want to agree with your previous statement that um, I shouldn't just say criticism without explaining the detail because I think that that does equate to a negative comment because people will see it just as a negative comment without the constructive part there. So I think you're right about that. That's right. And um, I will try to be more careful with that. I, I think that's a good point. Um, so the second thing, so that is a large claim and – um, before I made this claim ever, I actually clipped the video of it out of context. I like, took the name out and showed it to several popular players in that group and asked them if they thought that was an example of slow play. Everybody agreed with me. And I think so, if I showed it to I'll you, to go back and watch it. I I will you would agree. This. And, um, you know, I think that that player intentionally slow played to go to turns and I'm willing to let anybody watch that video. And they, I think they will agree with me. Because I tested that hypothesis before I made it. Uh, I'm not saying that that player was not deserving of being in the final match or that they weren't a very good player. They played very well, by my estimation. Um, I'm not even saying they wouldn't have won that game if it was on time. I'm just saying they never got that chance because it went to time. And part of the reason it went to time, but not the only reason, is that they noticed it was going to time and intentionally slowed down their turn. When they went to draw a card, they took one card off the top of their deck, put it on the table, waited a sec, then slowly slid it to themselves, did it again with the second card, and then untapped each one of their backups very deliberately, one at a time, like like very slowly. And then didn't even look at their hand until their like whole hand was formed and then looked through it one at a time. That is slow play. And slow play is a problem in this game, especially when you're going to have a format where um, how much damage you receive can determine if you win or lose. 
that's a pretty big problem. Like, I have lost games where people, like, I'm winning the game, you know? Like, sure. they're out of stuff, but they hit me early because they were faster, but sure. I was planning that. And then we just run out of time and I lose. And I don't think sure. that that's a good competitive scene, especially people, you know, they spend a lot of time in this game. They buy a lot of cards. They go, they fly sure. to the Crystal Cup. They deserve a final match. And, again, I'm not saying the player who won the Crystal Cup wasn't no, a good I... player, didn't play well. Or just, yeah. I can appreciate I think... that. I think they were slow play. That's just okay. that's what I think. And if someone disagrees, they can watch the video and they can make their own assessment. So, um, you know, um, during my final match at Nationals, uh, I, I, I wish it was streamed, to be honest with you. But I, I had two to three judges watching my match. Um, I had called to watch for slow play. Uh, my opponent was extremely nice, mm -hmm. but was visibly shaking from being nervous. Sure. Yeah. Um, and he, and he, that he, happens. he just said, hey, man, I'm so, you're such a great player. I'm very proud to play against you i'm just very nervous i said no man it's cool i understand i'm just calling them just to speed things up he was, he's yeah. the first player i've ever called a judge on for a slow play which sure. was very nice about it i've never had yeah. that experience so it was great but it's an awkward experience I, I, right it is yeah. i had to make plays that lost me the game based off of time and i i would agree with you miles that that is not we're playing for a world we're playing for a world flight ticket yeah, and he like went you're on. You're going to London, on, right? Yeah, like, yeah. He went on to beat Max. So let's say I had won that. It, it's a whole mm -hmm. different scenario. I either would be going to London, or Max might be going to London. It's a whole different, and and in that affects worlds. And maybe people don't see that as like the butterfly effect, but it, it is a big deal. I agree with you. I think you're exactly right. Um, and I don't know that there's anything I can do because the culture in Japan is very much that. If 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 I'm playing against you, Miles, and we go to time, mm -hmm. and you're clearly winning, I'm going to just politely concede as quickly as yeah, possible. Yeah, that, that is what I have done as well. And, and that, but um, that's just the culture in Japan. It's yeah. not the culture here. And I know that in the here, it's a very different culture. During our LQ, um, this is how I found out that if you go to time during the LQ, and someone hasn't conceded by turn three, it's a double loss. Yeah. Not not at which point people sign the slip immediately. Um, because what we had happen is we had a, we had a player go to time against my friend and, uh, my friend had one loss and this player was XO. Uh, this player had zero cards in hand, was dead on board. Um, my friend had plenty of cards in hand, clearly was going to win in turn four. And the opponent just kept saying, well, I'm not going to concede because I'm X and O, you should concede to me. And it was just like this most asinine Situation. Yeah, I think that's unsportsmanlike. And, right, and so we were like, hey, look, like you guys have to make a decision now. The whole tournament is at this point waiting for yeah. So I actually just messaged RB and I said, hey, what happens during, what's the time procedure? He said, at, at the end of turn three, it's immediately a double loss. I said, okay, guys, it's going to be a double loss right now. And then the guy was finally like, well, you're going to concede? And I said, Chad, don't concede, because that's my buddy Chad. I'm like, Chad, don't, sure. this guy's being a douche. Just just take the double loss and let's, let's move on. He's like, the guy's like, fine, I'll concede. And it's like, well... But, but they don't have that problem in Japan. And so yeah. this time issue won't necessarily be a big thing. But I will say that we're seeing improvements in Euros, where Euros has moved to a 90-minute time limit. Sure, which is better. Right. Um, but the final I, match... So I, I, Some people told me it was like 120 or 140 to the final, the final event, match. And I'm not saying that won't be enough time. It yeah. probably will, right? It seems a reasonable amount of time. So that people respond to that counter. Like, but what if it isn't? Right. No. What if it's the final match... We want the person who won Worlds to win it fair and square, no controversy, so it can be all about them. No one can say anything about the rules, no argument. We want it to just be joyful and fun. And when you have that time limit, you you increase the chance for a low-integrity game, which doesn't mean cheating, but just, you know, the, like you said, you have to make different plays, right? Right. Or you or a controversy. I mean, well, they, they, why they, isn't it fixed? Some of the arguments, and, and just, just to play... An advocate sure. for your side. So, some of the arguments that people say is you, you you look at things like the World Cup, which mm -hmm. has a time limit, which can go to time. You have things like that, right? But there is no slow playing in the World Cup. Uh, yeah. you, bat, you know, in basketball, is the closest you get to where someone can slow play you ahead. But there you are got a shot clock, though. You know, exactly. Right? You that's what I'm saying. But you yeah. have things to to do that. And so in Final Fantasy, we have a shot clock. It's called the judge who's sitting next to you who needs Correct. to do a, a better job um, at – making sure the pace of play is adequate um i think that we're moving towards that and that's good uh we're not there yet uh and it is an awkward thing because sometimes you know 
there's a lot of interactions because people have a lot of backups. And there's 10 backups in play. Each player has four cards in their hand. You know, that's a lot of interactions. It can sure. be pretty complicated. It, it, and, go ahead. But there are times when people pretty are obviously slow playing, especially when, like, they have one card in their hand. And what are they going to do? And I think that it would be helpful if judges mention it more because it is awkward to call your opponent on slow play because you don't want to be rude. But you also don't want to get screwed over because of it. And so yeah. I think that, you know, there needs to be more culture of the judges. And, th and there should be a that. time. Judges need to be trained because it shouldn't be, um, it should be, well, the judge sees what's in the hand. He knows the game's over. He needs to say, hey, speed up the person. Yeah. No, there's just, there's clearly some amount of like, well, maybe he has Shiva, so I'm not going to attack all out. But, you sure. know, more, more than a minute on a turn where you have, in fact, I would even say more than 30 seconds on a turn where you have a single, you've drawn your two cards and you're not playing on doing anything is, is a little excessive, right? Yeah. And that and that does happen. Um, and we don't have enough judges to police it all the time. De definitely, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not magic expecting a perfect system. It's just it seems to me like they there hasn't they're not like a state of the game update. You know, like I don't see them being like I I've been complaining about a lot of this stuff for over a year, and I haven't seen like a blog being like, hey, these are some growing pains we've had. This is what we're working on. You know, we're getting better. So all I see is I bring up a problem. Some people agree, some people disagree, and then nothing else happens. Okay, so one of my questions for you is, what could uh, Square Enix do to improve the game? And it sounds like one of the best suggestions I've heard from you is uh, a State of the Game blog. Um, they have had several State of the Game updates, but they haven't made them official. For example, uh, Europeans being the, the new time limit for them. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, top 8 lists being uh, published the night before an event. That is absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, that and definitely needs to I happen. Was, but see, one of the things that happened, and I and I don't want to click, I don't want to take credit. It's not like mm -hmm. I did it, no, but no, it's one fine. of the things that I said, fine. one of the things I said was, "Hey, I will not play on stream if decklist will not be published," yeah. because I don't think that that's fair. Uh, and that did happen to me, and it has happened to me. And I have look at my opponent's decklist if they're published yeah. on stream because that's just smart. Um, that's the well, best I mean, information so available to me, right? It, it's it's good advertising for the game. For them to like let people know what decks are doing well. Oh, absolutely. Like, like when the Mono Water deck won the Crystal Cup, they had an article out like a, a while ago, like two days afterwards, and they had a good pitch. They posted like, "Look at Garnett and Steiner. They won the big event, right?" Mm -hmm. Like that's for a lot of people, they're not going to know the people's names. Like in Magic, you know, not everybody knows Finkel. You know, sure. like all, all of us do, but but like a lot of casual players don't. But they know, oh my gosh, you know, Exalted Angel won that tournament, or right. Ravenger won. That's awesome. And so they, that's they like, don't know Jordan D, but they know, but 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 Soya going undefeated on day one is pretty cool, right? Yeah, and so, so they too. should say that. They'd be like, whoa, look at this hero from the set. You know, that went undefeated. They need to make the cards when they win part of the storyline more. And I don't think they do a great job of that. And it. It's easy for them to do because they're characters. So if, if Zidane does something, if they see Zidane winning, you know, coming out and winning the Crystal Cup, like all the nine fans are going to be happy. So and it just make it, the game has that character base built in. And I think they need to appeal to it more. A good example of this would have been, um, I know RB really wanted Ishtola to be like the centerpiece of yeah. Kansas City. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when uh, it was a six Estola finals, I yeah, had three yeah, Estolas definitely. and he had three Estolas, and Estolas was one of the most uh, important cards in the matchup. Yeah. So you're saying we need to highlight that. Like, it's cool definitely. that Sam won, but Estola was the showcase yeah. of this tournament. And they do that in Magic, which is really great. I, yeah. I agree with that. They, they should have been like, Estola won her own cup, you know? And then they can say, like, who won and, like, have a little picture, but, like, make it Estola. Like, that, hooray. Like, and he mentioned that on the stream, I believe, which is good. That was good right. commentary from Richard. I, I think he doesn't like me a whole lot, but uh, I think he does a good job Um, at a lot of things. You know, I just, um, I said, I just want to see improvement okay. and things, you know? like So if you had I mean, a call to action, one of the things would be um, an updated, maybe, blog uh, of what? Hey, look, we've here's how, where the competitive system is going. Would that be yeah correct? Yeah. So I I, I think a a even just a bi week uh, bi weekly blog being like okay. this is what's been going on in Final Fantasy this week. You know, like like um well everyone's been playing uh, Lila Viking. You know, but uh, here's a couple guys who've made these anti Lila Viking decks. This is what the meta is doing. You know, here's a couple cards so, that Kageyama thinks are underplayed. So like, we want to see RB Kageyama and and Tim reach out to the community per se and maybe even write some of these things sure you know, and um, or if there is a controversy like if some asshole like me or somebody else has a problem with something in the game talk about why it is the way that it is because they might have some like one of the events um i believe in indianapolis crystal cup like they had to like speed get done with that game like hella fast at the end 
which I had a problem with. But um, like they're like, well, we couldn't do it any other way because we had to leave the event hall, right? Like, I think but, you're talking about Toronto, in fact. So it might have been Toronto. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know that. I'm just watching the stream, you know, with my friends trying to enjoy the, the event, and then, like, they speed out of there and run away. And, I'm like, right. if they told us that, like, I, I know that they've said it in messages, how I know it, but if there's, like, hey, this is what happened kind of blog, I think it would just be nicer to know. Like, so if you're watching... things like, uh, I know, originally, it killed me that they did, when Square Enix did not have, it wasn't Square Enix, it was, you know, Break Zone, but in, in, in coordination with them, they would not have the winning interviews originally. And it yeah, just killed I mean, me. And, and so yeah. when they started doing winning interviews, I think it completely revolutionized the stream. Uh, sure. Or even for the, I think it was the German Nationals this year, they had like the trivia that came up on the screen during the break time. Yeah. Um, and that was wonderful. And at the, it, like during one of the things, the lady who was uh, doing the, the commentary she's like oh i think we've gone through all the trivia so we're gonna put up some, find some new ones for you for this next break so while that's not great it's at least better than uh the same song on repeat i would agree with that yeah um, I, I, and the point is like so when that doesn't change then that's crystal cup and it doesn't change again i mean that's something that's why i get frustrated because like i'll ask people and i'll talk to them and they'll be like oh yeah i agree and but it doesn't get changed i just want to see some of the things that i've complained about and it's not just me, but some of the problems that people have that sure. I'm vocal about. I just want to see something happen. Right. I mean, so like, see, here's some of the things they have done that are great. Um, their their price support and like what they're doing for the seals, like pre releases, is amazing. Like, I think that the the deck box we're going to get's a big deal. I know a lot of people are going to come just to get the deck box. I think giving us custom sleeves was a really great thing. I think adding the dice helps the shops. I think that's all really great. Um, I think that. For a while, we were wondering, like, why the box art was just the Final Fantasy, like, the PlayStation era characters, you know? And, like, now they have, like, this amazing art they've commissioned of arts for the next set. Noctis like, is finally coming. Yeah, and, and, and how do they do Noctis? We're like, where the hell's Noctis, you bastards? And then they're like, here's Noctis. He's a full art fucking promo legendary buy a box, and that's awesome. That's, like, the best way they could have introduced Noctis. That's amazing. I think that's, sure. like, perfect form. And so, like, they do a lot that I really like. So, like... My, I like, I like eighty percent think this game is great, and I like have twenty percent problems, and I don't want people to think that but, I like have a negative aspect. But you of the think game. people's perception of you is probably the the reverse, right? That that twenty percent of this game is wonderful, but you dislike eighty percent. Is that yeah? So like, yeah, like in, like in our Final Fantasy Seattle group, you know, we don't have a lot of negative conversations because like we're just all talking to each other and enjoying the game. But I feel like in the fan group, it's a chance to talk to the greater community. Uh, about the problems and um like i said i don't always do it right but i also think sometimes people have been kind of cruel to me sure. i did write a, a what i thought was a nicely worded thing explaining like what what i think monks are why i think the job type is like i've explained right, to you yeah. and pretty much everybody just made fun of me like they didn't even engage with my argument or they'll say that like and then i explained that martial artists and monk are synonymous and then like they just like refused to like acknowledge that even as an argument they didn't even argue against it but like, like, so black belt, martial artist, and monk are the same thing in Final Fantasy. It's a synonymous trope. And, like, people just, like, started memeing me. And it's just like, okay, I get that, you know, some people think I'm an asshole. But, like, if you're going to tell me my arguments, I mean, you at least engage with it instead of just make so, fun of me. So part of that um, is, of course, the what precedes you, right? Um, sure. The arguments I, what precedes you. I, so, I get that. Right. Um, so going forward, what what's the next step? You know, because... You obviously have a passion for this, and you want to affect the game because you enjoy the game, and you it seems like you enjoy the community also. Although sometimes, it, sometimes I think that memeing of you is fair, and sometimes I, I agree with you that it's not fair. But moving forward, how do we? How do you change that? How do? Well, how I do think you increase. I think it would be a lot better if I actually just made uh, more constructive content, like if I wrote a blog or did a YouTube video talking about it. Um, I so I was, that. yeah, I think that'd be better. Um, you know, because I'm supposed to be a writer. <laughs> right. So I should, but the thing, it's just hard because I, you know, I do a lot of science, like blogging and stuff too. And so I like, takes a lot of my time doing that research. And so it's, it's kind of hard to write a Final Fantasy blog. I mean, like I want to. Um, can't be, I, can't I, be any longer than a, a 30 thread argument. <laughs> well, yeah, I know a lot of times, sometimes it's because it's on my fucking phone. That's I'm out fair. about, right? So That's I'm just fair. like tweeting on my phone, like, fuck you, bastard. She's a monk. You know, so it's not like I'm sitting down. Um, yeah, you know, I, I probably should do that. Instead of arguing on Facebook, I think that that would present my arguments better, and um, people wouldn't assume I'm just, like, shit posting. Right. 
<laughs> um, so I, I was on um, live from Midgar a while ago, which is the podcast we're starting up here in Seattle at Geeky Villain. I'm cool. um, trying to talk about it. So I'm going to try to be on that more so people can hear that. Uh, who hosts that podcast? Um, there isn't a technically a host right now. I guess I hosted it last time. But okay. uh, So it's just uh, some of the players in Seattle. Um, Andrew and Steve, who are both at Nationals from Seattle, were on it, and as was I. Um, and it's at Geeky Villain, which is our biggest shop up here in Seattle. Okay. So. If someone wants to find that podcast, uh, is it on YouTube or is it on – where do we find it? Um, so it's on um, – What's the orange one streaming cloud thing? I know what you're talking know. about because that's what we start with. So what we started SoundCloud, with. I SoundCloud, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it, it's on there and he posts on YouTube as well. Just called Live from Midgar, okay, uh, the cool. Geeky Villain podcast. So, Cool, cool. So moving But I, I agree with you. I, I do need to put more effort into um, kind of formalizing my arguments and so that they're seen as arguments and not seen as just criticism, right. which is what I think some people see them as because that's not how I mean them. Right. I think you gave a really good example when I mentioned the card sleeves. Um, because to me, I'm just like, oh, I'll fix that problem already. And so I say it, right? right? But people who don't realize the thing are like, why is this guy bitching? And well, so it's not a constructive comment. So I think some, you're right about that. There are some other arguments, too. And I'll just give you an example. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, one, of my, uh, one of my close friends was, uh, when I was preparing for this argument, uh, not for this argument, what are you not arguing? I, when I was preparing sure. for this podcast, I said, hey, guys, if you had to legitimately ask Miles some questions, mm -hmm. what would they be? And one of the things was like, well, why does he think that his friends deserve to be on the on stream when they weren't doing well at at, at, at nationals? I said, well, can you show me timestamps that show me this? Because I would like to present solid proof. Yeah. And so they showed me uh, a timestamp, which I agree was an issue, where they said, uh, or you said, also of course it's more LA dudes. They are so biased, dude. Josh Gardner, uh, and or, sorry, and, and you said biased, dude. That's when Josh Gardner and myself were playing. Um, and then later you had said someone had asked about how your friends were doing, you had said X2. And I said, I told uh, my buddy, hey, well, that doesn't mean that he's asking for his friends to be on stream. They're not yeah, related. No. But yeah. because you didn't further explain the LA thing, it translated to, well, I'm upset that my friends aren't stream. Why is there another oh. LA guy on stream? But yeah, I mean, the thing so, was is that I, Josh Gardner is not an LA guy. He's actually Vegas. Um Although he does play for Meta Potion, I will agree. That's that. what I'm saying. It's that group. That, that I mean, but we have it, Andy, Andy Carmona also, who's from Miami guy, also plays for Meta Potion. So here's the thing: yeah. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about this, but it seems to me Meta Potion people are on stream way more than other people. That's true. I don't have the data to that, but that seems very true to me, and I think other people have acknowledged that's true. And I think that's a little clickish. And I'm not in that click, and I know that they don't like me. So of course, people are going to just you know thumb their nose at me for that. But I think that that's true. Um, my I buddy think that Steve, it's true, and I think that it's also smart. Because well, that, that might be a good argument. Because, because mean, they're advertising, and they're not they're not trying to advertise for Meta Potion, but the Meta Potion guys are well known, so they're doing sure. a well job. Whereas, like, I think if it came down between, let's show this really awesome deck or this Meta Potion guy, they should choose the awesome deck. Yeah, if, I mean, if like, they're given the same record. And also, there's a selection bias because a lot of the Magic Potion guys are very good and very accomplished. Right, so of course, they're going to well, be on stream a lot, and and that's reasonable. And I don't have anything against any of those guys, and they should be on stream a good amount. But it seems like it, it's almost always them, like a predominant amount of time. And it's just a little like okay, like if you're not in that clique, you're not part of the community. And especially okay. up here in Seattle, like for a long time, we didn't get a Crystal Cup till way later. So a lot of our players were just kind of left out of the group. Like when so I was talking, you, like I'll sorry. give you a good example of where I think that you you're correct. Um, the first match going into round five of nationals or round four of nationals after coming back from our three buys because I spent a lot of time with Jordan playtesting and uh, mm -hmm. we kind of formed like a, a group of testing together. Sure. Um, Okimoto and uh, Brian, who also had the three buys, would have spent a lot of time. But yeah, we all hung out. It was really friendly during that yeah. time. That being said, I had zero doubt that the that, that there was two choices for stream. It was going to be if myself and Okimoto were paired. There's no sure, way they're not going to stream. You got to play that one, right? right. I, or I they're going to stream Jordan Jordan Dink because he's yeah. the two-time Crystal Cup winner. Yeah, you know, definitely. And so I will agree that when they they went with someone other than Jordan Dink for round one it, or round four stream, it seemed a little biased. Whereas Jordan Day, he's like, oh, like I want to see Jordan Day on stream, you know? Yeah, like, he won two Crystal Cups, right? So yeah, like, this that's is a, a, he's very a reasonable. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree. And that he played very well in those two. That he did, he's a great player. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's a pleasure being able to test with him, and his deck was uh, very simple but very brilliant at the same time. 
Yeah, I just think so. Like, there's fires in New York and Florida and Texas and Washington, and I just feel like you know why is it's always focused on the meta potion group? It seems like, and I just think you should focus on other people as well. They should at least think about that. And and it's possible. Um, it's 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 hard to to see that blindfold. You know, the break zone they are North Cal. If, I, if sure. I'm not correct, so they they have a a bromance with those guys, and that's okay. I get yeah. that, but I, and, and, I I see a perspective on the national level event at the national um, where national stakes are on the line that that it should be. Well, the Seattle Crystal Cup. None of our Seattle guys were on stream. So you want local guys? I well, I, I mean, do that it'd too. It'd be nice, right? I mean, like, well, Kansas I mean, so they I, did that. In Kansas, they had yeah. they purposely put Ben on because Ben is the local hero from Kansas. You know, they yeah. made sure that Ben was on stream. Uh, I would we play had, Jake we Leo. Four guys, but... <laughs> yeah, we had four guys who went to nationals, and uh, uh, three of them, you know, made day two. And not one of them got a single stream match the entire time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they should have, you know, but like meta potion guys who came up did, you know. That's fair. So it's just like it would have been nice. I mean, like they were winning these games. They made day two. I missed it by one game because I suck. But uh, you know, like I don't know. It just would have been nice. It, it doesn't necessarily mean anyone did anything wrong. And I'm not accusing um, the break zone guys of like intentionally doing that. I think it's probably an implicit bias, you know, like they're just like, oh yeah, it's our buddies match. That's a good match. But I just, it's just a little problem. You know, I don't think right. like it's like ruining the game and it only matters to a small subsection right. of players, but it's just a little criticism I had. It's not like yeah. a big deal. You see, cause if I, yeah, I agree with you that the, the prejudice is there, but I think they should continue it. And I know that sounds no, that's Ironic. fine. I mean, it's if you just, have a good reason, you have a good reason. I, so. I just, I just feel like uh, you, you put, you put Okimoto on stream. It's gonna always gonna be a good time. Uh, uh, Okimoto you know, should be on stream if he's playing. He, he's a known player. He's a successful player, and he builds right, creative decks. That's right. that's totally fine. But no, I, said there, it, I agree yeah. with you though. The, you okay. know, for for the stream with, uh, you know, I was surprised they didn't put two of the EXOs on stream when it was um, Josh Gardner versus myself. Uh, yeah. They put we were both X one, and they put us on stream. But it was. What was interesting, it was the first time uh, the team Meta Potion had played Team East uh, East Coast Podcasters. Sure. First time yeah. ever. We'd ever had a match yeah. against each other. Additionally, there's only two sponsorships that I know of as far as card sponsors. So it was the first time a, a Cards of Evilies player had played against a um, a TCG Titans player. Sure. And, so and, I, and that's fine. I, I think that that might have had something to do with it. Yeah, I agree. You know, that's I mean, there, there, there are good reasons why those biases exist, like very compelling reasons. And so if there aren't a lot of matches, I don't have a problem with that. But I do think it's a bit too much. As fair. Well. That's fair. I so, so, see, I feel like like when I write that criticism, it seems more mean, right? Like, so when I explain it to you here, like, you can hear that I'm not, like, frothing about it. Right. But it's kind of hard to type, oh, these guys are on stream a bit too much and make it not seem mean. Sure. If you say these so. guys are on stream a bit too much, it almost comes across exactly a little harsher yeah. than, than if you say that. But that's not, that's not really what I'm meaning, you know? Like, I get it. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything besides uh, that you want to say before we wrap up? Anything that you that we didn't cover that uh, you were hoping no, to cover? No, we're good. I just, um, I really appreciate you having me on the show, you know? And like I said, uh, I think you're a great player and I really liked your deck that you played. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate at, that. At Nationals. Yeah. So I, I was talking to my buddies, like what they should play. And I was like, a lot of people are, are going to play Vikings, but a lot of people are going to play decks that are going to beat Vikings. So you should try to beat decks that beat right. them. And that, that like, my goal was to beat Mono Ice and to beat Vikings. That's all I wanted. Yeah, and I was very yeah. successful at doing that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you were playing on level three, man. And, and yeah. I think you did great. It's a shame, you know, the time thing happened to you. Yeah. Um, but, so. <laughs> you know, but, but people were impressed with your deck, you know, so that, that, that's its own kind of reward. I and, think. And, I'll, and I'll just say this before we close up. I, I did, mm -hmm. you know, I told RB, I said, you know, I am sad, but I have faith. I looked at right. I looked at right eyes. I said, I have faith that this won't be an issue next year. I have to yeah. believe. And I do. <laughs> I have faith. I've, I've seen so much growth from scoring. I've seen so much growth sure. towards this game that I have faith that we're if we keep pushing for the positive, if we keep growing yeah. the game as much as possible, it will grow in a and, positive and I, way. And I believe in you, man. And I, I believe that, you know, there's an optimistic outlook for this game. I mean, I, I'm a pretty busy guy, and I don't really get a lot of time to play games like I like to anymore. This is the one that I choose to play. Right, you and know? that says so, a lot, right? That says a whole yeah, lot. And, and um, so I just want it to be as best as it can be. Absolutely. And, you know, like... I, I, I'm sorry to people that I've uh, been rude to, and I'm sorry that I've not put enough effort into kind of explaining all my criticisms. I should do that more. You know, like, uh, I went to school for being a journalist for a while, 
So like I kind of have that, you know, look for the problems and report on them kind of thing in my brain. Yep. But I don't think I put enough effort into explaining them. And I think that you made that point, and I think it's a good point. And I'm sorry about that. But uh, I do appreciate everybody that, you know, at least takes the time to listen to what I have to say. And I'm very appreciative of you having me on. Yep. I, I think so it was nice of you to do. So thank you. For those that are listening, my goal uh, for this cast was to give a Miles the, the, the human side of Miles. Because sometimes it's hard to remember that there is a person on the other side of that keyboard. We yeah. are arguing with a person who is part of the fans page because they are a fan of the game. They're a fan um, of the OP. They're, they're a fan of the franchise. Um, and, and I just wanted to give you a chance to clear uh, your perspectives. And, and I had a feeling, particularly if we start off with the positives that we could sure. see that, Hey, look, you are passionate about the game and you just want to see it grow like everybody else does. Yeah, uh, And sometimes we forget that. And sometimes I feel like we, including myself, uh, in the past, specifically, so I apologize for that, can rally behind ganging up on you. Sure. And, and we can do that as almost a brotherhood in this. We're standing by, we're almost white knighting the game. And I agree with you that white knighting the game is not appropriate, uh, that there are issues. But I, but then I, I, I disagree with the way you're handling them. And I got to say, I appreciate your um, you owning up to that and you owning up to making a, a change for that in the future. Um, I look forward to your podcast for sure. Thank uh, you. Let me know when that hits up. We'll definitely advertise it. Okay. Thanks, man. Well, I appreciate that. Yep, Miles, thank you for joining the cast. Um, it's been an honor. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Uh, it was really nice of you to have me on. And before we close off, I do want to shout out, even though this is a special podcast, I do want to shout out to my sponsor, Cars of Evilise, um, because I got to keep uh, making that money. <laughs> but but thanks a lot, James. I, I appreciate everything you do for us. Um, He's a good guy. He gave me money on Final Fantasy XI. So. <laughs> no, he, he is a really nice guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I've been Samson Knight Prime. Uh, Miles Grab. Uh, and we'll, we'll catch you guys later. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.